Hey guys, a bit of a different video today. Um, this is actually a video that I've been wanting to do for a while, or at least this style of video. And so now is as good a time as any to start. Uh, you guys have probably gotten tired of seeing, you know, all of my builds. And so what we're going to do today is take a look at some builds that other people have done and talk about uh, not so much the mechanical aspect of um, the methods used in integrating, you know, the, the bonding itself, but more of the style and aesthetics used. Um, because I have a particular style, everybody has a particular style uh, with the way they build their blasters. And so let's look at some everybody else's stuff and kind of discuss the things to look for and, and you know what 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 kind of works and and things like that. And so I figured this would be a good opportunity to start because the uh, Nerf subreddit just had the Nerf, the Merge Masters Two competition, which is a big integration competition. And at this point, the winners have not been announced. These are just the entries. And so I can, without uh, bias, go through and talk about good things and maybe, you know, not so good things about particular builds uh, without really being affected by actual winners or anything like that. And I'm not covering all of the blasters that were entered in the competition, um, probably about half or so, because uh, some of them I didn't really feel I had any input on. Some were relatively self-explanatory, not to say that they were poorly done or anything, but just... I just didn't have much to say, and this is a, a bit of a discussion video, as much as, of a dis as much of a discussion as you can have when you're the only one talking. So let's get into it. Starting with the Duelist class, which is the simpler, like, two blasters used in the integration, kind of your typical, like, Straven kind of thing, where it's a blaster and then maybe a stock added on, or a barrel, or, you know, one other, you know, two blasters used. And so to start is Winter is Coming by Scruffy Nerf Hoarder. And this is a strife, uh, yeah, stry bolt, uh, strife, and cross bolt integration, which we're seeing more and more of, uh, especially since ravens are kind of falling out of favor, or stravens are falling out of favor because ravens are getting hard to come by, even though Coles just released uh, the Raven Fire, another version of the Raven. But anyway, uh, this is kind of your basic, uh, basic stock integration, but also includes the front end of the barrel of the cross bolt, and. I know when I built mine, there, when you cut the cross bolt in half, it's so short that you really can't blend, you can't really carry the lines across from the, the stock area to the muzzle area because the, you're literally cutting in half and making a, a strife sandwich, essentially. And so you have to get creative with the area in between to kind of tie it all together. And what I thought was really cool, like my favorite part of this build, is using the priming slide and putting the voltmeter in there and dropping it down where the jam door is. And that's like really, really cool. Like I, I'm you know, gonna make a note of that. And I know when I did mine, I turned it around and used this the same way to cover up kind of the jam door area. Um, but no, this is, I, I really like how this works. It keeps the, the profile, you know, the top pretty, uh, pretty even. There's a little bit of a drop down there, but um, it, it keeps the lines of the blaster looking a lot better because uh, you don't have a whole lot of weird changes in elevation or anything. And I'm not sure what he did here, because as I, as I recall, the rails are a bit different between the strife and the cross bolt. But he was able to get the rails themselves to line up, and it really helps really unify, because it looks less like there's a barrel or a, a piece of a blaster stuck to the front of another blaster. Whenever you can take a, a certain trait or characteristic of one shell and blend it in or pull it into the other shell, that really helps, you know, unify and create a lot more of a cohesive feeling build. And, you know, here where you have that rail is, is something relatively insignificant, but it does make a difference. Also, you have the, the kind of aesthetic of the cross bolt here, you know, obviously on the cross bolt part, but then taking the same aesthetic from the priming slide, where you got these kind of slots, where that's kind of a common theme on the cross bolt, it's all these little slots and stuff, you're pulling that into the strife body itself, and that really helps tie the whole thing together to where, at a glance, you're really not sure, like, where where the line is, where they stop. And that's really what I go for with integrations, is kind of blurring that line between shells. But no, this uh, this here was actually, uh, no, it, it, it's, it's really nice. I really like, like I said, I, I like this part and the, you know, pulling the rails together. So that was Winter is Coming, Scruffy Nerf Hoarder. Uh, next on the list is Roadkill by Liberty Foam Designs. And this, 
This is a uh, Mastodon with uh, a Chaos kind of wrapped over the top. And that's, uh, no, you know, I've got a, a Mastodon and I've got a Chaos, but I can't really tell exactly where the line is, which actually, I mean, that, there again, it's, it's kind of what you're going for, but I mean, this, this kind of drops down where the magazine would be, but yeah, it's, the, I guess an indication of a, of a good merge is you can't really tell what all's going on. And that's uh, really what we have here. It's it's uh, obviously a, a fun blaster. Um, but no, it's... Uh, it just... It, it, it works. It just looks good. It's got... Uh, it kind of maintains kind of this uh, stocky, um, you know, muscly look. Because it's a Mastodon. Um, but it just... The lines just work pretty good. You know, you're, you're, you keep this kind of consistent rail across the top. Um, no, it just, it just, it's just a good merge. Like I look at it and I say, wow, that's pretty good. I can go for that. Uh, next up is Heavy Full Auto by Captain Black Eye. And this, I, I, if I remember right, I think I saw some of his concept art when he was first, uh, first working on this and posted some stuff on the Reddit. But using the Super Soaker, um, one of these mag fed Super Stoke, Super Soaker things, um, using the, the main body as kind of a barrel area. I really thought was cool. I've never personally used or you know actually handled one of these super soakers, but uh, that really inspired me as far as you know. Wow, you can use this whole basically essentially the whole blaster minus the grip and stuff, and it makes a very convincing barrel. And especially if you you know use the existing barrel that was on the blaster, I think you could probably modify. And there again, lining up the rails is a big. It, it just makes a big difference, you know, on integrations and stuff where you're able to make it look a lot more convincing that it's a, a single unit and not things stuck together. And here there isn't a whole lot of actual like blended in. I mean, I think pretty sure these guys are glued together, but it's you can still whoops, still see the factory seams and stuff, but it's not it, they're not egregious. I mean, you have access for a rail here and that's cool and a rail here and that's cool, but it doesn't uh, like at first glance, it doesn't necessarily look like it's made out of a bunch of pieces. And that's, you know, like I said, it where it's not actually blended together and you still get that effect, that's pretty good. And here, we extended the stock a little bit of the hyperfire and uh, you know, used a few little different pieces and stuff to kind of stretch it and pull those lines back. And this actually, I scratched my head for a while trying to figure this one out, and that's the back of a Magnus that just kind of helps round out the back of the hyperfire, which I've never really cared for this area on the fire, hyperfire. But yeah, just adding this little bit of a the top slide of a Magnus really just kind of helps it tie together. I mean, it's just, I, there again, I I saw that when this was first posted and I was like, okay, gotta write that down. You know, that's that's something to remember. But there again, you're, you're keeping a real consistent line, um, kind of a consistent theme. There's not a lot of weird things jutting out or anything. Um, even this little piece here um, isn't really a distraction or anything. And being able to use a shell, you know, really unmodified as far as you know, you cut the handle off and stuff like that, but didn't really have to modify anything else. That's actually uh, really impressive. I, I'm really impressed with this build itself. Uh, next up is uh, Eingarf. I'm gonna not bother trying to pronounce that correctly uh, by the backwards nerfer. Is just kind of your, I hate to say your typical strife bolt integration, but it it's uh, the 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 combination itself isn't original. But it's very well done, just very well done. The, uh, you know, moving the, the grip or moving the stock back a little further on the strife, you know, whereas the, the grip originally would have been right here on the cross bolt, moved it back a little bit to get that extra room, which I would definitely recommend because the one I built was awful cramped. But it doesn't necessarily look like it's missing anything. I mean, if you look real close, you can kind of tell a bump there, but it's not really distracting anything i mean it's it's uh just 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 a clean integration just very uh very clean and well done one of the main things and it's kind of a silly thing that i really like about this as far as the a uh, final presentation is this stripe that comes through and and it's not it's not a, a major thing as far as okay it's a little, a little stripe detail but there again it pulls it pulls the two pieces together it's uh like i said it, it feels like a very minor thing but where you can make a detail like that flow from one shell into the other 
and not look weird, not look like you're going from one shell to another, that's really what, what you're going for, really what you want to have happen. But, no, I mean, obviously, clever use of clear parts, cast, cast his own parts and stuff like that. Very nice build. I like that, but just the, uh, for, for a, I guess, a, a, a build or a combination we've seen in the past to end up looking, you know, nice and clean like that, that's, that's, that's an accomplishment. That's, that's, a, that's just nice. Next up, Undertaker by Cryptic Hand 1. At first glance, I, I mean, I recognize the, the Vagabond part and the, I uh, can't remember what the Super Soaker's called, Scattered, no, uh, shop, shop Blast, Shop Blast, I think. But when you look at it, it's, uh, it just looks like a single blaster. I don't know what all happened. I mean, I think this is the, I think this is Shot Blast parts as well, the Super Soaker parts, I think. Um, but like I said, I, I'm not sure. And that's, to me, is a good indication that of a, of a good integration where you can't say, oh, that's a this and that's a this and this, where, this is where the line is. It's, you know, relatively seamless. I mean, this pulls all the way back into the trigger area. Um, the cylinder is kind of covered up. I don't know if, if it's open on the other side for loading or anything, but as far as uh, presentation, it, it just looks right. I mean, you have a full full coverage, I guess, you know, from the front all the way to the back, back in here. It's just, I don't know, it's it, it's just very smooth, very clean, um, very, it looks like a single blaster. And, and that's, I, I, I'm going to keep saying this, but that, that is the, the idea of an integration and not things stuck together. Integration means that they, you know, become a single a single item or a single unit or whatever, and that's that. This uh, Undertaker does it very well. Uh, next is the Rough Arm by Bergberg Modding, which I believe, if I remember right, it's an auto strife in here with the uh, rough cut parts on the outside. And while the integration itself uh, is, uh, I don't, I don't want to say like messy or whatever, but it's. Um, Style-wise, is just really what hits me, and, and of course this is a uh, upside-down strong arm here. But it's just, I don't know. I, I like the style of it. I'm using a, a rough cut, something that has two two barrels essentially, and sticking a single barrel out of it. I guess if it may be uh, unexpected, it's just I would not expect somebody to uh, take uh, rough cut parts and you know wrap them around a strife, and then follow it up with a upside-down strong arm but I, but I like it. it it's a it's a good uh, I don't know what it is about it but it's it's the 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 style itself is clean I mean it's it's you, there again you have a nice you know straight line here there's not a lot of weird anything weird hanging off I mean, this is a screwdriver or a drill body I think but ignoring that part it's um I don't know it's just I, I like the style I guess and you know, it's it's completely off the wall, but it's not offensive. But no, it's uh, I, I I do like that. It's it's a, a a different take on things, and I I have a lot of respect for people who try doing things that most people would think would be weird, uh, because oftentimes that's not an easy decision to make. But no, the uh, rough arm, very uh, very unique. But but I, I I like the the style, aesthetically pleasing. I think is what I would call it. Uh, next up, Equalizer by Kayakasaurus is a uh, thermal hunter, or whatever the heck they called the other one, the non-thermal one, and a long strike. And this is about as perfect of an integration as you can get, I think. I mean, you're taking the good part of one blaster and the good part of another blaster and putting them together and getting something that is seamless. I mean, the... Uh, I'm guessing the line is in here somewhere because there is a bit of a disturbance in the body line, but I think this is uh, long strike parts and I believe a Maverick slide, I think, that kind of helps blend everybody else together. But it's just it's just a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. I mean, it's it's just, I guess, making what the long strike should be as far as performance and comfort and stuff like that. Um, it's, it's just like the perfect marriage of two parts and I... I don't have a whole lot else to say about this except wow. 
and I don't, I don't say wow a lot necessarily, but that's that's just good. That is just really good cuts. Just the, uh, the tying the bodies together so well is just just there it is again. Wow, that's uh, that's a good good. I, I'm gonna have to move on before I start babbling and sounding dumber than I am. So I believe that is the end of the uh, duelist. We'll uh, jump out of here, move into the triumvirate class, which is the uh, with the three to four or something like that. Can't remember. Uh, can't remember what the exact qualifications were for the triumvirate class. <clears throat> but uh, first up, we have Centuries by Zcal98. This one hit me really hard when I was scrolling through the pictures. I recognized the Centurion, and I thought, wow, there's a lot going on here. But it's, for the most part, it's a modulus, you know, bass blaster that's just expertly blended into this Centurion. It just just fits real nice. Like, I'm really baffled at, at how that was done. I've never looked and tried to compare a uh, Modulus and a Centurion, but it, that just it's just good. It just looks nice. This here, I think something must have been weird where the shells blended together here, because this is, I believe, Magnus parts, I think, right in here. But looks like he used the whole centurion shell the whole main shell without the barrel and got it to pull all the way up and uh, I didn't realize the modulus was, was that long and then this here is apparently a uh, recon retaliator barrel but it, for, for like on paper you say it's a modulus and centurion integration and you say okay whatever but in, oh come back where'd that go come back there we are it just looks good. I mean, you have a lot of uh, barrel issues and stuff as far as performance, um, considering you have the flywheels back here. But as far as aesthetics, that's... The, the Modulus Centurion integration, I'm going to say, beats the heck out of a Strife Centurion integration. And there again, I'm going to take notes of this. That's, it's just... A, it, it just it just looks good. <laughs> I, I, I could very, very much see myself doing this in the future. And you're taking the, the good parts of the modulus, being the symmetricalness of it, as opposed to the strife. And so I, I can see this being an infinitely easier integration than trying to integrate a strife uh, into the Centurion. Um, also has a little bit wider magwell, and so it, it kind of matches the, the width, the extra width of the Centurion a little better. Um, put some kind of rail, it looks like, in here. I'm not sure what the rail is out of. Um, but to fill in that jam door area, because if you left it as a jam door, it would look like, why is there a jam door going into the barrel? It might be a bit silly, but I don't know. Maintaining kind of the the long top rail, and it just, I don't know. It just it just works. This isn't this isn't a combination I would have uh, thought about, I guess. But it just, I don't know. It works really well. It's uh, or again, at, at the risk of babbling, um, it's just. It just it's just right and I guess that's the good part about a good integration is that there's really nothing to say besides that so yeah that was uh, that's centuries by Z call 98 uh, moving on uh, Arctic wind by 498 nerf if you haven't watched the build log on this that is an interesting uh, interesting viewing it's basically a chaos riding piggyback on a twin shock which if you if somebody you know, there again, on paper, it sounds weird. I would not have thought of the co this combination, but it's beautifully done. Uh, and it's it's uh, the idea of having the Chaos magazine come down, you know, behind your thumb, creating kind of a you know almost like a thumb hole kind of feel where you got something right behind the the thumb there. The, the uh, I don't know. I I'm running out of words in this video. I think the the amount of work. In cutting off the stock and reshaping it, and reshaping the battery door and cover in that is just, just mind-boggling. But it looks just good. It just looks right. I mean, having this, the angle on the stock matching pretty much the angle of the of the magazine. Uh, you know, if the stock came down straight, you'd have kind of a weird area here. But it's just, uh, I'm I'm finding myself just saying this looks good on everything. But I'm honestly not sure. I think, I assume this is the line, the integration line here. 
but yeah, because there's these lines. Yeah, this ties in here, but it's just you're blurring that line so much that you don't really look at it as here's a mega blaster and here's a rival blaster. Um, the aesthetics of the shell itself, you know, just the design, which is one thing you have to look out for, is just the way that the shells are designed or built, um, how sharp the angles are, and some of the detailing like that. Um, when you can match those between shells, it goes a long way. That's the one part I don't like about trying to work with Firefly integrations, is that the Firefly has a lot broader panels and softer edges than a lot of the other in-strike blasters, like the Strife, Rapid Strike, stuff like that. And so, I guess that's why I like the Rapid Strike Raven integration, because a lot of the lines and the texture of the of the shapes of the shells are, are you know match so well that it's it's easy to to match them together. And so that's what we have here. It looks like he also uh, added just kind of a regular shotgun style uh, horizontal grip, which is very nice as well. But yeah, the just the the dedication of the time to reshape how the stock fits on and just the work on the battery door is just just impressive and very very noteworthy. And again, if you haven't seen the build logs that he posted on YouTube, definitely check out 498 Nerf and just and just watch those because it's 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 cool to listen how you know through the design process and you know how, how he's looking at stuff and it just yeah it, it's good it's it's worth the it's worth the watch.